We're going to go ahead and start. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. This is it. We're going to do two weeks in a row. Woohoo. When does that happen? I don't know. It's, yeah. In the midst of uh, craziest time, uh, crazy times right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was one of the weeks. Um, yeah. A uh, crazy <laughs> week and a super busy week. And P- Florida is packed. packed. <laughs> Naples is packed anyway. And uh, we have an emergency phone call here. We interrupt this podcast for everything okay? Yeah. Okay. Not emergency? Everything good? It's all good. No emergencies? Okay. No. Kids okay? Kids are good. Okay. So uh, last week, it, you know, it's kind of the peak. I don't know if I'd call it a peak. It's it's just the surge of uh, the season business but there's that extra component this year where there's just more people coming here or working from here uh, remotely well and and where we live in naples is kind of like what we've gone through we have done this for years it's how our industry is structured um it's a lot of snowbirds from the months october to april or may because it's cold up north everybody comes here um, so th- this is always kind of how it's been, but it's a little different now because of COVID. It's busier. Yeah, and because you you said that if there's anybody out there from up north that uh, is working in a salon or was working in a salon and you can't now because it's not open, uh, come check us out too because we have a room for you. We have we have room for more people, um, especially as, as busy as it has been. So I'm Rob, one of the owners of Robert of Philadelphia. This is Alexi, my daughter. For those of you that don't know, uh, we have uh, hair salons in the Southwest Florida area. And this is just a chat about um, life in our life regarding uh, the the business world of hair, uh, how uh, life affects salons. And uh, I'm not a stylist, so you're not going to hear about the best way to uh, have your hair cut styled or colored i am uh, do the behind the scenes and i'm here to support the team on uh, being the best they can be at doing what they love and and they're passionate about it and they love what they do and they're damn good at it too uh but that's not the focus of the show is the is the hair side of it it's more um all over the place in other things and (laughs) if you would have covered it if we could have had a uh i'm glad we didn't have cameras in the salons last week. See. <laughs> Actually, that would have gotten some views. I don't, I don't, no, we, I'm glad that didn't happen. I'm glad we, I'm glad we don't have those. So <laughs> that one of those weeks um, that uh, everyone is recovering from uh, just the nature of um, any business, I guess it would be. Yeah. I mean, that could happen. That happens everywhere. Sure. Families, and you know, there's, dynamics like that that's always right. something that's happening e- even if it's it, in every location I and mean, in everybody's life there's always things going on um yeah one of the things was um uh, yeah even in the last week so i heard this uh r- real estate statistic of the week because um just hearing about you know everybody's becoming a realtor now we have a lot of realtors in, in florida be- or in naples because they've converted careers to being a realtor because there's so much activity in real estate so everybody's jumping to the real estate market to be in that um and one of the realtors i heard last week talking about the statistics for the naples area last week there were uh, in an average of 85 homes sold per day in the last eight days um, and that the wow. available inventory there's 2200 homes for sale homes are I guess that includes condos as well. Uh, 2,200 listings, which is a one and a half month supply, I think I heard them say. And uh, they normally have a six or seven month supply. So there's a small supply and a lot of people buying. And also they're buying for at asking or more. 40% of them are buying for at asking price or more. When in the past or the last four or five years, it was only like 26% were buying for at asking price or more. So, I mean, and people are buying homes here without even coming here to see them, um, which is kind of crazy to me, too. You know, it, without anything, you just find it. It's what you need, and it's you have an offer on your multiple offers, I've heard. It's like bidding wars. Um, yeah. It's pretty fascinating the way the world is changing 
Well, yeah, and I guess here, uh, I mean, it is, you know, I keep saying it, but it is. I mean, you're just seeing this room right here. You don't see the paradise side of it, but it is paradise where we live. We live in a great spot. So, um, you know, I, I did, I'm not going to go into specifics last week about the ride that we're on and you know it's always a ride in in any business or just in life in general um you know what goes on and one of the things that um i think i i, I realize more now than ever is um how how important um our values as a culture are um and that goes like two ways and I think there's something I want to say about this because it's it's not even related to anything specific it's just sort of how we have to evolve and our our culture is evolving um, because of everything being turned upside down the way that it has been um, we haven't I, I was at I was at one of the schools this morning I was at um, one of the cosmetology schools just in general discussing the the industry and you know sharing our thoughts with some of the students to let them know what's happening and to see where they're at and finding out you know uh, what they're up to and we haven't we haven't been in a lot of the schools since more COVID. than a year and we used to go to the schools all the time so yeah this was the first it was a treat big deal yeah to be back there and um you know i want to you know hopefully all of them will be opening up so we can get back in there to you know do our best to support them and moving to the next stage of their career, uh, whether it's with us or wherever it is, we just want to be able to support them and sharing with them some of the, uh, the intricate, what goes on for us really was what it was. I wasn't uh, giving any, uh, specific. Well, yeah, nothing like, uh, nothing like from, you know, a parent, you should do this. I mean, we were given some guidelines, but, but so much has changed for us in a year and you know, uh, uh, they were talking about at the school, like the, the culture right now, or it seems to be a, a way with their, with a group of students is some, sometimes they're just, there's not that level of uh, rigor or uh, on purpose or um, integrity. I guess the basics, you know, dress code, uh, being on time, those kind of things. And, and I know looking at our culture that, you know, so many things have popped up that there have been things that we've let slip through the cracks that we haven't, um, uh, followed through with as far as the basics go and uh, you know with you're, you're basically in survival mode and a lot of that was that and so some things have slipped and and I, I mean as a culture as a whole and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody but talking about our, uh, our our position on things and then going through what I went through personally with my, with my wife and, um, and and what was happening uh, in the world with shutdowns and emotional ways and vaccinations now and you know social distancing and you know all the many 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 things that go into this um not being um as rigorous or or keeping the integrity in of our um structure yeah and and i don't mean because it's different now and i I don't mean structures like rules because uh, rules managed rules being managed but a cultural uh way where um and I, I think this has kind of evolved to where there's independent responsibility to like the co- to, like owing it to your part owing it to your coworker that being on time means that it's going to mess you up if I'm not on time like it has an impact on everybody and this is that's just a little thing talking about being on time but but being on time or um, supporting you in a way that I need to support you or how I'm dressed or how I look or how I'm well, taking care and, of myself. And all those little things, while, yes, they're little things, they all have effect, um, a, a, a huge effect ultimately, like big picture. If you look at the big picture, um, they're little things, but all those little things are kind of what makes you great and kind of supports everybody else here. You know, um, it's... It's those little things that all add up that make us who we are. Yeah, and it, it, it's my role to have those, you know, to point to the direction of where we are with the, you know, that, that intrinsically inside of everyone that there's this want and desire. I want to be there. I want to do the right thing. I want to succeed. I want us to succeed. I want to take care of the guests. I want to rock their world. I want to m- make sure that they have a great, great experience here. And, and, I, and I think everyone, that's in everyone's heart. And when... I don't hold everyone accountable for um, being the best that they can be in their own way. And it's different for everyone, but being the best who they know themselves to be. Or lead. 
like just leading them. Yeah, and, and not being available to lead, like with, with whatever, because there's breakdowns and there's, you know, there's there's always breakdowns. And then, but that's a part of it. I mean, when you're in business for 40 years, you, you've been through a lot of breakdowns and it's how we recover from the breakdown and how we respond and how we react and what right. we do. And that's what also provides that level of longevity for people too, because a lot of times, you know, people hit walls. I mean, some of the relationships that we have with the people in, the, in, in our culture and in our company are long relationships long like working together with someone for 20 25 30 35 years you know most people don't have that kind of relationship at all with anyone in their life you know most marriages don't last that long (laughs) people don't have that kind of relationship with 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 some people in their own family you know their blood but they they don't talk you know they're they don't see each other or talk maybe holidays you know uh but to be with somebody consistently over time to work with them and you know it's funny sometimes I'll, I'll, somebody will say, "Well, gosh, I wish they would just fill in the blank." I'm like, "Dude, you've been working with them for 22 years. Do you think that is gonna? Do you think they're gonna change that? Whatever that is, do you really think for after 22 years? Do you think that's gonna be? I mean, that's like you know saying you wish your husband would, you know, cook dinner and rub your feet every night. I guess I don't know, or <laughs> whatever it is. But uh, and." and Somebody at the school this morning said, you know, realize that you can't change another person. You know, you, you can't. She was talking about a past job that she had. And she said, you know, I, recognizing that I can't change other people. I can change the way I respond. And this was an insightful response. But I can change the way I respond. And, and I guess ultimately, I'm, I don't even know where I'm going with this. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking after the week that we had, thinking out loud. Because I go through the, this uh, process in, in my mind of, you know, the impact of the week. Because I know everybody ha- had a hell of a week. I mean, it was just not only very, very busy, but there was just a lot going on at every location and with everyone. There was just things happening yeah, last a, week. A lot it, of stuff happening. One thing would stop and then it would, and I guess, but that's just, I, I noticed myself, I was getting frustrated, not frustrated, but like you get, I was getting overwhelmed. Like it was just like, okay, we would f- solve one problem and then uh, the phone would ring and there would be another problem. And then it's, it's, it's firefighting. It's all, it's always, it was the highest level of fire, but it was, but, but what I realized is, is rather than like, I was telling him, um, I was like, Oh my gosh, like I'm frustrated. I was getting frustrated. I was anxious. Like, and, um, that's the beauty of what I get to do every day, you know? So, and my response to it is going to affect the way every other employee is. So it's important. Yeah. And that, and that's all we have really but in in the end you know kind of the the looking at it without you know there's no blame to be placed except for on me like where we are and where we're going and what you know what's been missing and you know looking at the levels of integrity and looking at me stepping up the game for us so that uh it is crisp so that the you know the the business is operating at a high level and that um you know we're taking care of people at every step of the way and um you know take taking care of people. I mean, right now we're turning away a lot of business. We, there's a lot of business that we can't do. It's a great problem to have, but I'd rather do it right uh, and give whoever's here a great experience and just try to capture it all um, because that, that has never worked and, you know, make sure we have the right people in the right spots because we're doing this year, uh, the demand is higher. It, it feels like anyway, we're not doing more than we did last year, but we have fewer people. So we're, we're actually doing more with less. Um, but getting to that place where I, I'm recognizing that, um, you know, we were talking about at the school this morning that um, it's turning up the, the the accountability. So, you know, ultimately what's really important is, you know, are we being kind, compassionate, loving, respectful, empathetic? I mean, is that the fundamental being? Are, are, are we being nice? Are we being kind to and respectful to, to everyone around us? Can we do it with kindness? Or are we so frustrated that kindness can't come because we're so overwhelmed? You know, then that's when we got to take a step back because it, you know, gets that overwhelm point. And I'm not just talking about in our culture, our company. I'm just talking about in general in the area. You could see it, you could feel it. Right. Like every place is taxed. It's everywhere you go. It is. A, a doctor friend of mine who uh, work I work out with at the, at the gym. He works in the ER at Naples Community, and um, you know, he, he just said their their motto, <laughs> what they're doing right now is they're doing more with less. That's kind of their motto. That's what they continue to do, and they're so 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 busy. And you know. Um, uh, another friend of mine's husband is a, is a manager at a restaurant and you know they're shorthanded so he's going to end up behind the bar and uh, you know everybody's just maxed out stre- stretched 
So how we left the phone ringing on the no, back. Okay, so it's but it's it'll come on over here. It. Maybe yeah. maybe it won't come through on here. Whatever, it's ringing. That's well. good. Good news. I'm glad it's ringing. I just didn't turn the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> New phone system too. So that got implemented last week. So we're working the bugs out of that <laughs> one too. So. Yeah, it was just a, a big week or thing happened last week. And good. I mean, we're lucky to have those problems. You were just looking at a couple minutes ago salons that are just now reopening in the UK. I think right. right? They've yep. been closed. Yeah. I'm sorry for you guys out there. That's that's tough. You know, I don't know how you're doing it. Um, or in other parts of our country. I don't know if anybody's closed. I think they're just as lower, lower capacity, maybe Canada. I'm not sure um, who's open, who's not. But I, And I feel like, again, like what he's saying is it's everywhere in Naples right now. A lot of places are experiencing this because I, I follow like this Naples restaurant group and um, I'll see a bad review and it'll be like, it's two hours for pizza and... Um, like the manager didn't even care or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, I could maybe understand how the guy was feeling in the moment, you know, but at the same time when that's when, you know, when you're not focused on that kindness and empathy towards even the people that you focusing on every person we do have here that we are able to take care of and providing them with still who, who we are, who we say, that's what I, that's why I love my job. If I, if, my job now becomes overwhelming and stressful, then I'm not doing what I love doing, you know? Um, and I'm missing that part of it. And I'm just going to continue the cycle of being. Yeah. And, and uh, so what does that mean? And, and I'm just kind of talking through this because you t- we talk about, okay, be, being kind, being empathetic. Okay. Well, if I, if I can't be kind cause I don't have the tools or I don't have the rest or I don't have the help or I don't have the support because I'm, I'm overwhelmed and all the rest of that. Okay. So then that becomes like an issue of, taking care taking care of yourself like an integrity issue making sure that you're taken care of you know like and whatever that might mean you know i don't know what that means it's different for everyone you know like help support uh time off um what you're doing after hour, exercising eating right um getting rest whatever that is but there, there's another issue and and you know it's it's obviously as a leader of this organization my responsibility to make sure that you know i'm giving you giving everyone here what they need to operate at peak performance and, you know, or, or as, as being the best they can, giving them the support. And I can't always do that. So I rely on people to, um, to be accountable for their own, their own well being and whatever that takes, you know, cause, cause there are times where, you know, we're not on top of our game and, you know, we're missing things and things are screwing up and plates are flying, uh, you know, and breaking all over the place or thrown in the air and things are happening. And, um, Literally. you know, we're not uh, just do, just doing what we can doing the best that we can. So, um, I, f- fundamentally, the bottom line, love, kindness, empathy, just being kind to people and being in a place where you or, can be kind to people. That's yeah. the ultimate bottom line, most important thing, and, and then everything else falls where into he, place. Where he, where he started out saying all the other little things, once you have all those little things and the kindness, empathy, being on time, like once you get back to the basics, then you're able to like, handle more and uh, for me personally once my mind I can quiet my mind and just go back to okay this is what I need to do and then I can all everything kind of falls into place you know um yeah and in being so when I say that and I want to say that because if you don't know our culture you don't know our way I'm I'm referring to a genuine, authentic level of kindness, not a scripted kind. Because yeah, there's there's ways that people have to cut hair. There's technical knowledge. There's technical ways that you know they flow through the process of how to book a, a, an a, a appointment. Somebody calls for the first time, and you know what questions do I ask them to find out if who's the best person for them, and 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 to, you know line them up. For example, you know people will call salons a lot of times. They'll say, "Who's the best? I want the best." And the, the average response is, "Oh, well, they're all the best." Well, that's just bullshit that's just bull that's not the truth they're not all the best they each have a different specialty so where where are you going to take that conversation so there's the technical aspects of that and and that matters okay so that's not a point that phone is ringing a lot i love it that's good that's okay <laughs> um the the technical parts but underneath it all like fundamentally um the, the it's got to be all based on 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 one thing, you know, and that, that is genuine kindness. And I don't mean like scripted, like, would you like fries with that? You know, a lot of places you call or, uh, you calling, forget calling. Or, or like I've been trying to deal with, uh, getting internet at my house and, you know, they transfer you from one person to the next one person to the next. Yeah. Comcast. And, um, at the, you know, they, that is so scripted. (laughs) It's like, 
well, hello, what is your name? And, okay, I, I've already talked to five people. They know my name. You should probably know my name by now. And then they go, you know, by the end of it, you can't help me. And he goes, well, is there anything else I can do for you today, Alexi? Uh, no, you didn't fix my problem. So why are you even asking? That's the weirdest <laughs> question. I don't, why do they ask you that? Like, they don't get the problem solved. And they say, is there anything? Well, yeah, you could get me dinner and you could get me a sedative and a massage after three hours on the phone with you. I don't know. Like, are you like... I just don't hear any authenticity in that. It's kind of weird. It's like, but there's a lot of that. I mean, that's, that's a, you know, that's probably one of the number one most hated companies. It's a, one of those up there, but having to deal with it, but there's just no, they, they don't give people the freedom to be authentic, to be real, to really solve problems with people, to, to genuinely listen and to, you know, that, that's not common. And, and when people are maxed out and they're so busy or they're so stressed or there's so much happening in life, there's so much more you have to think about now. I mean, now you have to think about, you know, I'm wearing a mask. Do I touch that? Do I not touch that? Do I shake their hand? Do I not shake their hand? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? Um, you know, uh, this thought of, did I, did I sanitize my, you know, like all these extra thoughts that you never had to have before. And now on top of everything else, you have to have those too. So you have the freedom to be yourself authentically and, um, and, and, and be able to listen and be kind and, and be present. Well, and, that, and that's what I was saying. Um, Saturday, we were short, and I was answering the phones from um, from my house, and I didn't have internet, so I'm answering the phones from my cell phone from our new app, and I didn't have internet, so I'm using the app, our scheduling software, on my phone while talking to guests, and with my two kids screaming in the background, but I realized, um, like, I was able to just focus on each guest I was talking to, and it, it it brought me back to like like I got to spend time with each guest, not worrying about every other issue going on, um, and bring myself back to being kind and empathetic and uh, sharing myself, and that's it make, bring, makes you happy. Yeah, and and you know that might sound like a simple thing, but but our you know like answering the phone, booking an appointment, but there's so much more to it in our in our family, our culture, because these anybody calling us or interested in us no matter who it is whether they're calling us to you know for uh, a hair service or calling us to find out about working here or what or dropping off an order from UPS um, they're coming in contact with our family and we want to create a, an impact so that there's a genuine thoughtful there's a there's like a that person knows they came into touch they, they came in contact with somebody who cared Right. That they care genuinely care. They walked away going, wow, not they, a Comcast they, person. They walked. Yeah. I, they really were. They care about me. Like wow, you know, like it. Like you impacted their day in a positive way. Instead of, you know, how many? Usually, when you go home at, at the end of a day, you're talking about who screwed up your day, <laughs> or how they screwed up your day, or how much your day was screwed up. Rather than, wow, do you know, I, you know, I, I ran into this person today who, you know. At the, at the school, um, you know, we're talking to a group of students and, and, and sometimes you can't tell what, what the people are listening or not. You, you, you can't tell by faces and they got masks on and you, you it can't makes tell. makes it even worse. It. I mean, I could imagine, I remember when they didn't have masks on. You, you don't know. Trying to figure out if they could know. Are they, are they getting <laughs> this? Are they sleeping through this? Am I boring Add a them? Mask. What are they, Who knows? what's going on over there? And, and you know, to, to, to have somebody genuinely engaged and, and you know, person could be engaged and just be really good at being, you know, <laughs> connected to what they're thinking <laughs> they're about, like, you know, yeah. what's for lunch or do I have a client today or I wish you would shut up or why does he talk so fast? One girl said, I asked a question and she said, could you ask a question again? <laughs> you asked so many questions in the question. I don't know what you said. So B had to interpret for her because I get going a little too fast. But um, that somebody impacts <laughs> your day in a positive way. <laughs> and, um, you know, is that happening? Is there enough... Uh, did you did you have the freedom to do that? So kind of that's the that's the theme right now coming out of last week and you know me getting back on track and and uh, doing what I need to do to make sure that everybody has the support that they need and that we have the infrastructure and the ability and the structures in place. We're hiring people and we're doing everything we can now to find those good good souls and good people. We're we're on a massive hiring blitz. So if you know anybody who's interested, please make sure they get in touch with us either you know, on this video or Are you want to move to Naples. Yeah. yeah. Wherever you're watching this in the world, you, you, <laughs> it's an opportunity to move to an incredible place. We'll talk to you about it. Really? No joke. So any, we're looking for desk coordinators. We're looking for associates. We're looking for stylists. So, you know, good sold, good hearted people, you know, anybody you come in contact with, you know, who's interested, please send them our way. Um, 
yeah, so that, uh, you know, getting back to that, even just having this conversation is kind of r- reminding me of like, oh, yeah, that's our, you know, that's that's what it's about. Like, you know, coming out of last week and, and starting a fresh new week, um, the, the takeaways of um, love and kindness and empathy with accountability. So meaning that, oh, not everything's airy-fairy and everything's lovey-dovey. It's right. not like love, peace, right. you know, that kind of thing. Right. It's just accountability meaning okay you're not always pointing the finger at oh they 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 what are you doing to make a difference how can you impact the pro how can you impact the circumstances right now like we have a situation or a circumstance what can you do to make a difference what can you do to make things better um without always you know pointing this way now you might need resources you might need other things but ultimately the most successful in our culture you know kind of t- are willing to take on some responsibility of okay i need somebody what do i need to do to get that done and i can here's a pathway for it right right all right uh, uh, n- next or whatever is next i know you well, have how are we on time on that thing oh you know what i, I know that's a good question oh is it safe to go in salons is it safe to go into salons so, you know, I, you know, I know what I have from experience in ours um, and then around the world. Um, you know, there, there are articles written about it. And uh, from, from our experience, is it safe to go into salons? Well, v- first and foremost, you know, in our salons, you know, everybody wears a mask, you know, as a guest or as, uh, as somebody working there. We're not right now, but typically. We're, we're closed in here today. Yeah, so that's why we don't have a mask locked. on. Doors locked. We're closed on a Monday at the promenade location. So um, we don't have masks on here, um, but but we there's always we always have everybody has everybody wears a mask every guest wears a mask, um, you know it d- doesn't even matter politically we're doing what we can do just to provide a safe s- safe as possible experience for yeah, our guests. Yeah, and I think it's really important because. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're not doing it to make any kind of statement at all on either side of the fence, because I know there's a lot of, of views and opinions on it, and 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 uh, seed the tables right right down the road, and <laughs> you know they 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 have a, a view on it, and you know other people have a view on it, and it's very divisive and all the rest of that. And we're not interested in any of that. We're just doing the right thing. We we, we have to, and we're complying and doing the right thing. The other thing is we have large. We have large salons, and it's always been kind of a, a problem that they're so big because we have much more space allocated per station. So this is pre-pandemic. You know, we've always had large room, large Space. spaces that we've leased in right. inexpensive centers. <laughs> right. So they're a lot of money. But because they're large, now that's coming handy because, you know, we have the distancing we anyway. The space, right, and right, we need right. the space. So, so we have a proper amount. It, it, we have way more. I mean, you know, we the average salon or the way they allocate salons is I think 150 square feet per station. And before pandemic we were at 250 almost 300 square feet per station so we had big spaces per st- uh, square f- per per hair station and then and now that we've we're doing staggering it's even bigger so we have we've have lots of room um so physically it's you know it's it's safer um we also have uh, the option of prepay do we talk about this last week prepaying uh, i don't think no so. no but 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 uh, is it safe i don't no, remember no, we didn't talk no, about that no. the other thing is uh one of the um there, as a salon chain, and I don't remember the name of it. I could put the link in there. That uh, in the, in the, over the summer, uh, the local health department did a study at oh, a salon yes. that um, yeah. they had uh, a, a employee of the salon who tested positive for COVID, and that employee had worked uh, for a number of days. And what the local health department did was they the, the employee wore a mask. The salon was following yes. all the uh, guidelines. Customers had masks. They cleaned in between each client. They had distancing in there. Um, the stylist was doing haircuts and color and saw 162 clients over the course of that time where they had COVID. They were positive. They had COVID. And they did those 162 clients. So the local health department contacted each one of those people. They followed up with all of them and, uh, you know, after the incident and then for so many days after that uh, to do a study to see if there were any that uh, contacted or contracted uh, the COVID, the COVID. Um, <laughs> and, and, and nobody, none of the hundred and whatever number that they were, they, didn't, they weren't able to contact all of them 
uh, but I think 120 of the 140 w was what it was. Uh, that nobody had um, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So so by following the guidelines, you know, it kept them safe. Now that's not obviously not super scientific, but it's a fact that as what hap is what happened. And right. um, you know, we've seen over 11,000 people since we opened back up on May 11th, and you know, we've had no incident reported incidences. Um, of, of there being people contracting from each other within. So um, in the beginning, you know, in the beginning when, when where there were, where there were, the rules weren't all set and the, you could not, the, you were taking off the mask in the back and now that's not happening anymore. There were uh, people who, people who did get it, yes. And uh, not customers, but m staff amongst the employees, members. staff members in the back room uh, who were taking their mask off back there. So um, they, that doesn't happen anymore. And people have been careful about it. And yeah, it was right at thing. one location, and I think the, the girl, well, there was a girl that was out of town and came back, and um, they weren't wearing, the employees weren't wearing masks in the bas back, and a couple of people did get COVID. But um, we closed down, we had everybody tested. Yes. This was the beginning of it. Yeah, before you even yeah. really knew how to handle yeah. that, it was like, oh my God, what do we do? What do we do? There was nothing in place at the time, and, um, and that was in June. July, yeah. uh, June, July. It was the summer. Uh, but, but since then, nothing. As, as we've, you know, you really get in a routine of safety and making sure everybody is safe. And I mean, we don't even drink out of glass cups right now. You know, we have like plastic cups. Uh, there's an option we offer people if they want to prepay, um, so that you know, there's no prosecco touchless in a, transaction. You get prosecco in a, in a glass. You get prosecco <laughs> in a glass and Pinot Grigio. Seven that's my block, favorite. For Merlot. Uh, alcohol wise, yeah, that's it. Pinot uh, and Prosecco. We're going through a lot of Prosecco, so. We have yeah, been going uh, through a, a mass yeah. amounts of Prosecco. I noticed yeah. that too. Celebrating. So that's, that's the point of But that means people people are happy when they come here. Or default to mine, which is espresso. I have a lot of that. <laughs> my espresso. Okay, so that's the conversation about is it safe? So from our experience, yes. Uh, wherever you are, yes. You know, if the, if you find out that the salon is you know following the guidelines and that people are doing the right, right thing, there's social distancing. Just be aware of the salon you're going to, um, if that's a question you have, or if you're in a salon, are you providing? I'm sure you are. You know, that's what you would hope. Uh, well, or not, you know, some people, hey, you could be the seat to table of, of a salon, you know, you get, get people who just don't believe in it and don't want to do it. And that's your, that's right. up to you. You know, that's right. everybody gets to do well, at least in Florida anyway. No, not necessarily because in Florida you're supposed to still have a mask, but I don't think they're press, they're not doing anything to you. Correct. Know, well, it's county by county. Okay. But if Even you hear he's got a lawsuit with the county. So. <laughs> There's a, he's filing, uh, he's fighting the, the, the county ordinance. Didn't he, didn't he, he, he got dropped. I thought somebody was fighting it against him for not wearing masks. I don't know. No, I, I don't know. Uh -huh. Could be. I, I don't know what. what you you haven't heard of seat to table. It is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I think feel like that's like global news. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a grocery store. Most of them, not a grocery store. It's a nightclub sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, it's a new concept around that. I mean, I could see stores. You know, the why there's the popularity of them even before the pandemic. I mean, you. You drink. There's a band playing there, and upstairs, and there's music, and there's uh, you, you serve wine. They're serving wine you, upstairs. You, is a they bar. have liquor upstairs or downstairs. You can literally buy a bottle of wine and walk around. You can drop your kids off in a playpen, like it's like this two story like little farmhouse where kids play. Um, you drop them off there for an hour and a half, and you can go hang out in the store for an hour and a half while your kids are having fun. So and it's pretty amazing. And the big thing about it is that uh, there's no uh, mask requirements. So well, the big thing about it being that that's where the controversy comes on because yes. they they uh, they are almost promote not and and it, whatever it's you know that's that's their that's his model and and it's working because there's a lot of people who go there and they got some national attention out of it now. As far as you know the medical side of it, that's on them. And, and if you go there, go there. You're on risk. That place is always packed. <laughs> I mean, that place is. There is a lot, a lot of people going, and it's doing really, really well. So, God bless him, and he's uh, he's a pioneer. That guy. He uh, and speaking of pioneers, um, Rush Limbaugh died last Wednesday, I think. Right. Oh yeah. So, um, and whatever your thoughts again are on politics, um, the thing about Rush Limbaugh was my father, Robert Senior, her grandfather, Poppy as he's known, who is in heaven My now, 
um, had a uh, a love for Rush. He he loved Rush Limbaugh, and he um, actually is, my dad's birthday is coming up uh, March eleventh. Um, would be his eightieth birthday. Uh, he died in twenty fifteen. Uh, but he loved Rush, and uh, Rush. It's funny because, you know, my uh, f- father, he didn't. I mean, he hated school. Never wanted to be in school. He's a. I, I don't think he was a dropout. I think he got kicked out of high school. I knew he, he went to the Catholic school because in in West Philadelphia, you know, I think everybody went to the the Catholic school, St. Tommy More. I think it was a school, and he, he got kicked out of there. And then he went to um, Overbrook. Where Wilt, Wilt Chamberlain went to school there, you know, like one of the tallest guys and one of the shortest guys. My <laughs> dad, and Wilt Chamberlain, went to this school. He got, he got kicked out of the uh, Catholic school, went to Overbrook High, and uh, and I think he got kicked out of there too. Uh, never loved school, but he was so passionate about. He loved this country. He loved. Uh, he was such a patriot. Just loved uh, everything about the freedom to um, to be an entrepreneur, to do whatever it is that you want, and uh, and. Su- succeed or fail, whichever one. And he he was always breaking the mold of things because he grew up in the era of the Italians in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, everybody on that street had a, their name ended with a vowel. They were all <laughs> uh, Italians and, you know, second generation maybe uh, from Italy. Um, and nobody went far from there. They didn't leave the nest very far. They were these row homes that are just these tiny, tiny little homes that... Um, you know, by today's standards, or you know, these are just like y- y- you. It was like a dorm room. You know, like <laughs> it was so little, but, 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 but my grandmother used to cook some of the most amazing food out of that what tiny time little. Are we at? I'm sorry, just running out of time. You got ten minutes left. Yeah, perfect. You good. Okay. Go. Um, cooking the, the 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 food, but the 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 Italian way was you didn't leave there. You didn't go far. And he <laughs> married my mother, who was you know. Ten houses down at before Wood Road. He, before he even married her, didn't he go work at like the fountain? He always would tell me that. Story. Yeah, he got into the he got into the hair business um, out of school more earlier because he was out of school earlier. And, and he, I, he, I remember he told me this story. Like, so he went out of hair school and he wanted to work in with the big people. So he went and uh, moved to Miami and was working in the Fountain Blue. In the fifties, late fifties. All these amazing people's hair. And uh, his mother would be like, oh, Bobby, come back. You got to come home. You got to come home. And uh, he, he went home and married my Nana. But Bobby was what they called him in Philadelphia. I don't know. Bobby was his nickname up there. Uh, so, yeah, he, he, he left before he left. I mean, he left. He came to Florida. Always wanted to come to Florida. He came here for a little stint, worked at the Fountain Blue, and then went back up north, um, married my mother i'm sure there were other women in between there that we didn't know about but then married my mother and um, i've heard some stories he's got a lot of stories and yeah he he uh he, he lived hard he lived a lot and <laughs> if you know him or know of him you probably know some of those stories um he uh then opened up a, a, a business up there and they ran that business for till the 70s before we moved down here uh just packed up everything sold everything up there and said we're headed to florida we bought a a, m- a motor home and lived in a motor home. We drove up and down the West coast of Florida to through to the keys. Cause he wanted to live somewhere where he could work from nine to five and then go fishing at night or lay out in the sun. Uh, Cause he loved the sunshine. He wanted to get out of the cold, which if you're still living up there, I don't know how you're doing it, <laughs> especially with the winter you're just or the week you just had, because I know everybody out there had a week and people oh, yeah, in Texas had a week. I want to talk about Texas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Had a week. So he, um, well, anyway, we ended up here, and while we had the salons here, and while this all started with Rush, while we had the salons here, <laughs> instead of listening to music in the salons, when Rush Limbaugh, and Rush Limbaugh came in in 1988, was when he started broadcasting, uh, Dad started playing, that's what he played in the salons, instead of playing music, he'd play Rush Limbaugh, I don't know what the hours were that Rush played, played on, I think he played on WNOG, was the station in <laughs> Naples, wonderful Naples on the Golf, WNOG, and he would play that in the salon, it was AM radio too, on top of that, so it was static oh and didn't gosh. sound real good, but he... That's what he had cranked up was Rush Limbaugh and, uh, you know, just didn't apologize for it either. <laughs> that's just, it's just his way. And that's who he was and what he believed in. And he didn't care what you thought. You know, he just, <laughs> this, this is who I am. And this is my salon was. if you want to be in here. In fact, he would smoke because you could smoke in the salons then too. And he would smoke uh, whether you wanted him to or not. While, if you wanted a haircut by him, you had to uh, 
deal with the cigarette smoke that he was smoking. So if he didn't want his Gross. haircut, he would say, okay, we'll go get Disgusting. your haircut over there. Don't smoke here. But that was the, that was the culture. That was the time. And Gross. I don't even know if it was the culture that a stylist would smoke in your, you know, wh- while they're doing your hair. But for him, it was okay in the early 80s anyway until it became a law that you couldn't do that. You used <laughs> to be able to smoke imagine? in hospitals. You yeah. used to be able to actually smoke in hospitals. So anyway, uh, so as a tribute to Poppy, uh, now Rush is up there with him and Poppy up in heaven. March Happy 11. birthday, uh, Poppy. It's uh, the month of March. Is I right used to go here. eat like lunch with him when I was in high school and we would sit there and he'd listen to Rush on the radio for an hour or two hours. Whatever. And he would share his his views and talk for what he's passionate about and you know, hours. his freedom, what, what he believed in. And and I was fascinated. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what about Texas? Yeah, one of, uh, Texas, you know, a lot of people were saying, boy, I'm glad I picked Florida because a lot of people were thinking of, I'm either going to go to Texas or going to move to Florida. I know, isn't that so Florida, crazy? <laughs> isn't that <laughs> so crazy how that happened? Yeah, right? And the ones who picked Florida are now going, I picked the winner. I got the winner <laughs> after the last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Things. funny, I follow like all these families in Texas on Instagram and stuff and um, just the issues they're having that you never thought you would have to uh, have before because when when have they ever had to deal with that you know uh not not normal there i mean we get snowfall in dallas forget about it because in you know in M- michigan you know they can handle three feet no big deal like they s- push that stuff out of the way and they're back to work in an, in an hour you know they're ready for it and right n- nowhere else the infrastructure the country, it's it's just crazy up. that's it's bizarre that just if, if, if these years can get any weirder and then <laughs> yeah, so well, those of you in texas i hope things are uh, better for you i hope Aww. you're warm and it's crazy um you're uh, they had safe. a shortage on water they had it's just crazy electricity it's just bizarre like so bizarre what a bizarre so you know she doesn't read the paper but where she learns all this is from tiktok i think tiktok no is i do news. because yeah. you can literally i don't see this in the paper i don't i i see it in people's living rooms that are showing me videos that's where i get the most real news from because <laughs> you can't get any more real than somebody yeah. physically showing you their house and yeah. i get that's like that's off, that's a genuine authentic view of what's going on it's not some reporter's view of some person's view and the reporter's view slanting the person's view it's the direct view <laughs> so it's you're look oh here's my <laughs> ceiling falling yeah. in because i didn't let the pipe drip last night because i didn't know i needed to do that or you know here's another girl who their floors leaking up everywhere and they can't find the shutoff valve for the water and they're searching all over the house ripping their whole house apart trying mm-hmm. to find the shutoff valve you know or co- college dorms I just saw like water flooding <laughs> everywhere or icicles for the lady that wanted, you know, they're not used to walking in snow ice or anything, you know, and just crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, that's a, that's a, a better source. I mean, that's actually a, a better source of reality than, you know, what, a slanted view of news. So right. yeah, good. Well, good that, you know, the worst is over for them. I, I'm hoping anyway, you know, yeah. I don't know where they're yeah. at right with that right now. But uh, it's getting better there. I mean, it looks like it is. Well, you could do what Ted Cruz did and just fly over to Naples for a little while. And oh, he went to Mexico, yeah, which you could pop on over here. Too, <laughs> he so. got in a lot of <laughs> shit for that, dude. <laughs> not the best, uh, not the best move, Ted. Ouch. I've been seeing all these people are like, I'm booking a flight to Miami. I'm like, don't got Miami, come here. Yeah, or well, you can land in Miami and then come on over. So, yeah, s- s- come see us. Uh, I also wanted to, um, nobody took us up on the offer last week, which still stands if they go back and listen to that. Of um, So the question of the of the week, I haven't question even thought about this. The week. So the question Ooh. is, which they can answer um, down. down. And, yeah, so all you got to do is put where you're listening from. So wherever you heard this segment from, in the comments, and if you're listening to the audio portion, you can email that in because that's on if it's on a podcast, if it's on iTunes um, or Spotify or whichever one of those it is. But if it's on uh, either YouTube or Instagram or um, Facebook or what am I missing? Uh, TikTok. TikTok, yeah. If it's yeah. on any one of those, just put, put that down in the comments. Wherever you're listening from, just put your city, state, and whatever else you want to put. But, but a minimum of that, if you do it by the end of March, you're going to get something significant that Woo-hoo. will rock your world. He, he just pretty cool shit. Just watch. Fine. Just watch. I'm, I'm 
you know, I'm for real. Nobody took me seriously. Probably they didn't get to that part of the, probably they didn't get <laughs> to that part. They had a lesson all the way through because it was like, what the hell are they talking about here? When's this going anywhere? Okay. <laughs> so if you actually did make it to this part, we shortened it up a little bit. Congratulations. And all you got to do is put uh, where you um, heard this from. And even if you, even if I paid you to listen to this, okay. So if you're on the, if you, if you work here and you heard it, you could still put where you are there, and you'll get a prize too. I promise you. It's okay. <laughs> We're going to keep this one a little shorter so maybe people can actually listen all the way through and if there's anything else you'd like to hear. Or Ann, to Odd, well, Ann Odd listen to the whole thing. Hey, Ann Odd, how you doing? She's got new floors. <laughs> <Ann Odd. laughs> how you doing? She's got new floors right oh, now. I want to see speak. him, actually. Yeah, she did tell gonna me. Gonna look nice. It's going to look nice. So. Oh. Yeah, David listened last week. Hi, David. If you did, David, did, did hey, well, yeah, what's yeah. that? So, um, well, we know two people listened anyway. Okay, hi, David. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> I think Michelle listened to part of it. Hi, Michelle. I love you. <laughs> hi, Michelle. Everyone else have uh, an amazing week, and if um, if you're back, we'll see you next week. Okay, yeah. Good luck today, Woo. everybody. Okay, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what you think, whatever way you are, I love you anyway. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>